Hello, everyone. Kevin Williams on the Shore Sports Network as we continue to talk high school sports here at the Jersey Shore and in the state of New Jersey. And clearly, much of the conversation these last couple of weeks is about the immediate future of high school for sports, especially the fall semester. So what better than to orchestrate a roundtable with my guys, uh, Bob Batters, who's the managing editor of the Shore Sports Network, and my longtime broadcast partners. Uh, we've done more than 20 years together, Matt Harmon and Ed Sarluka. Guys, thanks, uh, thanks to all of you for taking a few minutes to uh, join us today. Happy to be here. Kevin, yeah. I'd, like to get, I'd like to get the first comment in. Clearly, you and I missed the message about having a mustache for this. <laughs> I, I wasn't aware. You didn't put that in the memo. Bob got it. Ed's had it for a long time. I'm, I'm not quite sure what, what happened, but you didn't communicate to me this. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but when Bob got on, the first thing I said to him, is that a real mustache? Because the last time I saw him, he had a beard, and I haven't really seen him for a couple of months. And he, he confirmed, I said, does your wife like it? And he said, no, but I'm keeping it. So here we go. <laughs> Surely a Tom Selleck fan. Surely. <laughs> Mr. Baseball. There you go. There you go. Uh, guys, if this was a normal year, we'd be just about in the real home stretch of baseball and lacrosse state tournament action, hopefully with a few teams still left playing for the ultimate goal. Um, Bob and Matt Manley would have started working on some of their all shore teams. Uh, we would have begun working really on the all shore gridiron classic and also have turned our attention to a football schedule the fall and all of that. Well, stop it all. Because right now, none of that is taking place uh, for obvious reasons. We are in the midst of a pandemic, and the high school sports platform has been completely shut down. So, uh, Bob, I'll, I'll start with you and, you know, just share your thoughts on what these last couple of months have been for a guy who basically 24-7 is covering a sport here at the shore. Well, bizarre is probably the the easiest way to describe it, you're right. You get used to a routine, you know, covering sports. And, you, you know, you have a preseason, then the games hit, and you're out covering games and following a sport, and you're a beat writer. And for that to just go away immediately, it's just weird. You're used to being out on a field, you know, you're a certain time of year, you're used to doing certain things. And for the last, you know, 15 years, that's what I've been doing, covering, you know, short conference high school sports. Uh, and then you get to the challenges just – as, as any media company is going through right now, is how do you cover what we usually cover when there's no games going on? And obviously we've been able to do some things on our website, um, you know, and highlight some of the seniors and do a lot of things. But it's been such a different time that there's nothing that you can compare it to. You just have to kind of roll with it and, you know, face the challenges every day and think of new ways to uh, to engage readers and keep people informed and keep people entertained. And usually – you know, obviously, you're piggybacking off the games that are actually yeah. happening. And without that, yeah, that, that's been certainly a challenge. Matt, uh, the guy I've identified as the busiest man in show business, usually, uh, you teach at Monmouth University, teach communications. Uh, you do, obviously, some work for Monmouth University in terms of sports. But this would also be a busy time for you as the voice of the, of the Red Bulls, the soccer team, which you've been doing for the last couple of years. And all of that is shut down. What's it been like for you? Uh, it's been it's been weird, Kevin, to say the least. Um, you know, before we actually started the call, you, I were, have worked on the beach for a really long time. You said as the beach got up and going, I say thankfully it has because it's it's allowed actually a little bit of an outlet. You know, obviously the the making money part of it, uh, which is nice, but not having to we're not having the opportunity to call anything, whether it's been for Mammoth, for Shore Sports Network, for Red Bulls, for anything else. Um, has not been a whole lot of fun. I mean, there's been there's been nights where you're just not you're just not used to it. You know, you're looking at old games and you're thinking like, oh, I, maybe I'll maybe I'll call that. You know, all the all the old anything that's been on. Um, so it has it's been a challenge. It's been different, and it, it's hopefully something that we will never have to go through again. All right, now, Ed, normally you would be about 30 games into have watched baseball, high school baseball, <laughs> probably been to a couple of softball games as well, and, of course, your grandkids. So it's been idle time for you as well. Yeah, about my uh, only part-time uh, situation here is teaching swimming 
in my backyard pool to my grandkids. <laughs> That's about it. Um, yeah, I, I really miss the TV aspect of the games. Obviously, I'm a big baseball fan, having coached for so many years. And, uh, you know, I miss it, uh, as, as does everyone else, I'm sure. I think I can speak for all three of you in that the, the most difficult thing for us in our coverage as guys who follow high school sports here in the Shore Conference and in all capacities is the unknown. We are still dealing with so much. I mean, you know, I've talked to people even internally like I can't plan for the fall. I don't know what we're going to have in the fall. Um Things are moving along at a, a slow pace in some ways, but, you know, we have been getting some updates, and I want to sort of jump in. It was uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago the uh, NFH, the National Federation of High School Sports, sort of issued a 16-page, their guidelines for the return to sports. Now, it is not a Bible, but most associations in the country use that as a model, the NJSIAA being among them. We've got, after that, we got a follow-up from the president of the NJSIAA announcing the formation of a committee that was more of a medical group. And then today, as you and I are doing this, just shortly before we started this, we got another email from the NJSIAA that they've established a COVID-19 sports advisory task force made up of a lot of athletic directors, including Vito Chivarlotti from uh, Christian Brothers Academy. And they're more not the medical aspect of, but once we can, here's how we're going to do it. So with all that said, uh, uh, and again, Bob, I'll, I'll start with you on this one. Where do you think we sit? What's your best guesstimate about what the future of high school sports in New Jersey looks like? It's such a hard question to answer. You try to separate what you think is going to happen based on facts and what you hope is going to happen in your heart, uh, given what we do for a living. Going back to what you said, the NF uh, NFHS guidelines, I think state organizations were kind of waiting for some kind of guidance there. As you mentioned, they all typically will follow that uh, to the T. To the and you can see since that came down, the wheels are now in motion. The NJSA developed two task force within a week. As you mentioned, the first one, the Medical Advisory Committee. Uh, and now just today, the uh, the Sports Committee made up of athletic directors. And, you know, that first um, the set of guidelines had that three-phase approach where they group sports into low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. And you look at the high risk and you see football and you see wrestling, you see boys lacrosse, and certainly football sticks out because – it's the sport that's coming up next. It's the sport that, you know, is the most popular one uh, in the scholastic calendar. So there are so many questions regarding that. How can you play football with social distancing? They mentioned in there maybe players wearing masks. I Can anyone see football players wearing masks on their helmet? No, it just doesn't seem realistic. So can we take steps to get to that point? What will the fall look like? Things are changing every day. Fortunately, they've been changing in a positive aspect. We've seen a lot of the, the cases go down. The state is st slowly starting to open up more and more things. So this question in the middle of July could have a completely different answer, uh, good or bad. We just don't know yet. As of right now, you know, if things stay the exact way they were right now, I, I don't know what kind of athletics we could have in the fall. But things are changing for the better. You hope that trend continues. And if that happens, you know, we should be able to get back to some kind of athletics in the fall. What that'll look like, we don't know. And I don't want to step on your toes, Kevin, because I'm sure we'll talk about this. But there's been proposals to really dramatically alter the scholastic calendar, which could have different sports and different seasons. So that's certainly a possibility as well. We'll clearly get into that. You know, Matt, in looking at some of those guidelines from the NFHS, you know, I almost found them in some ways scary. Like, you know, initially talking about like at a football practice that you don't share the football with other people. Like you can't, I, you can throw and let the ball hit the ground, but you and I can't throw back and forth and things like that. And I just, I, I find it hard to, I should say I find it hard to believe it's going to be really difficult to monitor that kind of stuff and even assume that kids could do that. Kevin, I, I think for me, at least one of the things that I found most interesting is who, who's putting the information to say what's a low, moderate, or high-risk sport. And I say that, you, you talked about my work with soccer. Why would soccer be considered a moderate-risk sport as opposed to lacrosse? Why would basketball be a moderate-risk sport? I mean, you're on top of each other the entire time. So, I mean, listen, if it helps those sports get, get 
back to work a little bit. I think that's all well and good. Um, I, I just think there's so many unknowns. I mean, listen, within my own house, my, my middle son, Cooper, is going into high school. He doesn't know, am I having a high school soccer season? Am I not having a high school soccer season? Do I have to find another sport to play for the fall or what, what it is? So it's that idea, and you mentioned it before, that idea of the unknown, I think, makes it frustrating and challenging for everyone just from a personal standpoint, you know, like what am I, what am I getting ready for? Or am I getting ready for nothing at all? It's, it's such a question and it's so hard to answer. Ed, uh, I'm going to jump right into what sort of the, you know, the, the big topic that has floated these last few days. And again, we don't know to what extent that suggestion has really gotten to the NJSI AA. I guess this new task force will look into it. But the idea of some switching of seasons, and there's a couple of different ones. There's one that basically is talking more about football, uh, football and baseball basically flopping. Okay, baseball go to the fall, football to the spring. There's follow up ones, wrestling, because, again, you know, the issue of all this contact and being a high uh, risk sport, wrestling going to the spring. Then you have some that talk about take the entire fall season and move it to the spring and take everything in the spring and move it to the fall. Now, I know you've reached out to a couple of football coaches. I'm just wondering the initial reaction you've gotten from them about the possibility of playing in the fall. And yeah, I, I did. I did a little of my homework and I reached out to about 15 football head football coaches and got a pretty good feeling of how they're feeling right now. Uh, I would say 90 percent of them do not like the switch to the spring for obvious reasons. Um, the main reason being that if they move wrestling and football together, it's going to kill. And Bob could speak about this. <laughs> I think it kills wrestling programs especially in the smaller schools that just can't compete they have trouble enough you know in the last few years uh you know filling 14 weight classes as it is now you take away five six ten fifteen kids that are going to choose wrestling as opposed to football and it's going to kill a lot of programs I don't think it's fair to have a kid have to choose between one sport or the other when they've been probably playing that sport their whole life or wrestling uh, their whole life. It's just not fair. Uh, on the situation part of it, I think June, as, as uh, our guys have said, is a very important month. Let's get the pro athletes back into the playing fields, you know, baseball, hockey, and, uh, and um, football. And let's see what happens there. Basketball also. Let's see what happens there. Let's see how they handle that. Let's see what the testing process is. Because you got to remember, the high school kids are not that much younger than some of these college kids and pro, and pro athletes. So how does their body handle this? Very important. You know, the thing I find, though, and we haven't even gotten there, is from a monetary standpoint, the mm -hmm. cost of doing some of this stuff could be staggering. School budgets are in awful shape to begin with. Our state is basically broke. Like, who's going to pay for all this? You know, I mean, like, where is it coming from? It's even thought about if you've got to test with any regularity, 50 or 60 football players, if you've got to have extra monitors for various things. Um, and, you know, Matt, I'll throw this out to you. I mean, I, I get overwhelmed when I even start thinking about it. And I think that's a lot of people's problem, Kevin. Like, what what plan is going to make sense? I mean, tell me why it would make sense to swap baseball and football, but you're not going to switch anything else. Or you're going to take all the spring sports and put them in the fall and the fall sports and put them in the spring. I mean, logistically, there's so many problems and so many issues with that. That, I mean, to Ed's point, yeah, you're going to have kids, and, and I think you might have it anyway, and I was trying to think about this before we actually started. I mean, the last time this was really started to become an issue, I would say when um, I don't know who, who else would remember. I would because I was actually coaching when girls soccer used to be in the spring and then it moved to the fall. And everyone thought that would destroy field hockey. Well, it didn't destroy field hockey. I mean, maybe not as popular, but it, it, the sport's still there. And much like everyone said, oh, all these schools are now playing both boys and girls lacrosse. It's going to destroy baseball and softball. Probably not the same as they were 10, 15 years ago, but they're still there. You know, I, I just have a harder time thinking, 
you know, to Ed's point, actually, okay, you're going to move football to the spring and swap it with baseball. I mean, that's going to create just so many issues and problems, mm. so many issues and problems um, on top of just kids having to think, what is it am I going to play? And then throw in what you guys were talking about. Well, maybe we're going to move wrestling. Maybe we're going to do this. I, I don't know. And then, and then I think the, the one thing that I haven't heard anybody say, is it a one year thing? Or is it going to be like that for a while? If you move, let's say, football to the spring, how are you going to make sure that those kids that are uh, freshman, sophomore, junior who are not going to graduate, how are they going to get a little downtime with the assumption that they're just going to roll right into another season the following fall, fall of 21? So I, th I think there's a lot of things that, and I get it, there's, there's a task force essentially for everything. Um, but there's so many questions that have to be answered, I think, before anything goes to the next step. Yeah, and Bob, that's one of the things that hit me right away. Uh, the whole the concept of football going to the spring, um, you know, and of course, the hope all along with any of these is that we learn more, we get more, we find solutions, we find vaccines. But none of those have guarantees. There is absolutely no guarantee. I think we've seen from the outset the amount of misinformation at times has been greater than the amount of actually accurate information from everyone because nobody really knows. So my concern with the thought of football going to the spring is, you know, the kid who's actually a recruitable player, and I'm not talking about Alabama, uh, LSU or that. I'm talking about the kid who Mammoth or maybe even going to TCNJ or wherever well, he's a senior playing in the spring of a senior year. They've already, the colleges have already got their recruits for the next year. Like, you're on the outside looking in. So that kid is absolutely in a, in a terrible situation. In addition, let's be honest, football is a sport with a high amount of injuries. If you get hurt, you're see and, and if we're going to go back and play again in the fall, any kid who gets hurt in the spring might be missing two seasons automatically because of the time frame. I just think, Bob, I just don't get it. Yeah. There are so many layers to to that proposal, to switching the the sports in the seasons. And there's a lot of challenges that, that we don't even know about, that athletic directors know about, just in terms of logistics and switching things around and schedules are planned. It's going to come down to the people that make these decisions – will they value getting kids back on the field at any cost or will they value trying to keep the system intact? Because if you disrupt it too much, you're going to throw so many things out of whack that it might become irreparable. Now, I think a lot of football coaches are apprehensive about moving football to the spring for a lot of reasons. One of them might be, like you said, is this a one year thing? Is this going to become every year? We've seen it in a lot of different instances. Once that cat's out of the bag, it, it never goes back in. You know, with baseball talking about coming back and maybe the DH now being universal, I know there's a lot of purists who said, no way, it's never going to go back. Maybe football is the same thing. Does it stay in the spring? I, I wouldn't see that happening. But there's a lot of challenges. Like you mentioned, does it, it rolls right into another year? Like how do you have football and then take a couple months off and then go back to football? That could be, you know, high injury risk that, you know, is a potential liability. You mentioned with wrestling, football being the same season, Ed totally hit it on the head. You know, if I go back through the all shore wrestling teams, you look at the big upper weights, they're almost all football players. Mm -hmm. Very few of those, you know, especially at the heavyweight. You know, I can go off the top of my head. JT Cornelius, one of the better heavyweights in the shore, going to Monmouth to play football. Griffin Jackson out of Barnegat, one of the top heavyweights in the shore, going to UPenn to play football. That happens, you don't get those kids on a mat. Not only is that terrible for the individual, it doesn't get to compete in a sport. These programs now can't fill spots. So there, there's a lot uh, there's a lot that has to be figured out in terms of that going forward. Personally, I don't see it happening, but if this situation is dire enough where the option is that or we don't play at all, I would have a hard time thinking that athletic directors wouldn't say, okay, I guess we have to make this hard decision. Bob, great point there because in the talking to the coaches, almost to it, you know, a hundred percent said, "Hey, if it comes down to, you know, playing in the spring or not playing at all," they said, "I will play in the spring, and I would want my program to keep going. It's just not fair to these kids to lose. We've already lost one complete season last spring, and and you you heard about the talk and the players, and unfortunately, what happened to them." You know, we can't do it again. I mean, we got to figure out a way.
Kevin, you, if you guys don't mind, I'll jump in. You know, the one thing that, and maybe we were going to get to it at some point, that I think is interesting is we're focused on what? We're focused on Shore Conference State of New Jersey. If you're living in North Dakota, you don't mm-hmm. care what's going on in New Jersey. You want your high school football season to be where it is. So then, to Kevin's point earlier, talking about recruiting, I mean, I, you know, is New Jersey going to be an outlier and say we're the only state who's going to have spring football? Again, it's just there's too many too many questions. I, I, I would almost err on the side of if you can't play it in the fall, then you just leave it. I hate to say it, you leave it as is for this particular year. Yeah, uh, good point, Matt. And, you know, I interviewed Kevin Callahan, the mom of the university coach, early in the week. And, you know, he thought that the idea of spring for high school in some cases was a non-starter. And, Matt, one of the things he said was what you talked about. Think about the negative. Like He said, hey, Mammoth, New Jersey is still where we get most of our players from. How do I recruit a kid uh, who's a senior in high school next year? I, I, I almost got to ignore you know in some cases and there's going to be no camps this summer to see these kids as well which is really when the recruiting amps up so there there are a lot of issues you know the irony of all of this is to me the season that is in the most jeopardy if some of the predictions come true is the winter season again um i heard governor murphy yesterday on a radio interview You know, alluding to the fact that we know one thing, the outdoor is better than the indoors in terms of the virus. I think we would all agree, everyone would agree with that. So if these predictions by some, and again, predictions are true, that this thing is going to, you know, come back during flu season, November, December, well, that, that would be basketball, even if we didn't change, basketball, wrestling, indoor those sports would all be devastated because they don't have an option. They have to be inside indoors. So I almost wonder, like, that's – I understand we're looking at the most – the first thing, which is the fall season, I understand. But to me, the one that faces the greatest risk of being shut down completely would be winter sports. Hey, put the mats on the football field and let's wrestle. <laughs> all kidding aside. Rutgers, right. Rutgers it, did it. it. Rutgers did it, right, Bob? They did. They had the one. That's one match, though. I want to see. Who, I want to see who shows up for you know, Howell Southern in January when it's in eight the, degrees outside. In the snow. In the in snow. snow. <laughs> but you know, you're right. It, the winter is kind of the sport that no one's talking about right now because the spring season got canceled. Uh, so obviously that's fresh on everyone's mind. Everyone's mind. And the next is the fall season, which is in doubt right now. And winter is kind of like, well, we played it and we should probably play it again, but. You're right. No, that's far from a guarantee because uh, if this surges again and you have this second wave that that is certainly being talked about in the fall and the winter, similar to flu season, and you're talking about sports that are indoors that are highly attended. You know, think about a big basketball game and what that looks like, and a big wrestling match and what that looks like. That doesn't seem like it's even possible right now. So that that's another huge question mark. How, how does that? What does it look like when we get to November? Uh, and if it does, what happens to the winter season? If things don't change pretty soon, most schools will be looking for assistant cross-country coaches because it will become the most popular sport at any high school. <laughs> yeah. Hey, golf too. Let's go. Hit yeah, the links. <laughs> I, yeah, you know, I, I know you say that sarcastically, but you're right. The list of the, the list of sports, like you said, Matt, your own son is wondering, am I going to be able to play well, the one thing he could probably decide on is if you want to get him running, he could probably be on the cross country team. He's, I think he's within the earshot, Kevin, and I think he just he ran ironically the other direction. <laughs> so you know, I mean, we could do this for two hours, and you know, the four of us have no clue. As it, listen, you get any four people together, really, we're all just coming up with thoughts and and conversation. If you were a betting man right now. Would you bet that we have a high school football season this fall, whether it starts in August or Labor Day weekend, or maybe it doesn't start till the end of September? Would you bet on there being football, Bob? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say it's abbreviated. My guess is that it will. we won't be able to start practices probably until late August, early September, and games get going late September. But I think we will have a season My worry is that we get things started and then, you know, what if things are relaxed too much and then things take a a turn for the worst and then all of a sudden the season gets cut short. That would be a very bad situation. But I, you know, part of this is certainly thinking with my heart, but I think we're going to have a football season. 
a modified one um, on the field and in terms of what, you know, the stands will look like, but I think we'll have one. Ed, you and I remember when football practice used to start September, September 1st. 1st right. uh, in my high school days, that's what it was. You didn't play your first game till like the third week in like the 25th of September. Can you see that scenario this year? Uh, oh, very likely. As a matter of fact, in, in, again, in talking to these coaches, the older coaches knew all about September 1st. The younger coaches, what are you talking about September 1st? <laughs> we start June 1st. Yeah, exactly. you know, so they had no idea that we used to start September 1st. And every coach in the shore loved it because you did have time to get a part-time job in the summer and lifeguard on the beach or spend time with your families or go on vacation. Um, that's out the window now. I think Bob hit it right on the head, too. It might be delayed a little bit, and, and the number they come out with is like August 15th. If they could start by August 15th, you could get a full schedule in. If it's any later than that, you're not going to do it. You know, the playoffs might be a, a, a long, you know, a foregone conclusion that they will not have them. Matt, football in September at some point? Yeah, I think we'll have it because um, I think there'll be too much of an outcry for people to just – Right. Say we need to get back to normal, and I think we've seen that already. And again, to my point earlier, we're we're only really talking about a handful of states who are in this full on, like we are in New Jersey, in New York, um, some of the other Northeast states. The rest of the country's already gone about their business, and and a lot of states haven't been impacted. So I think we'll have it. I could definitely see a modified schedule. I could see you know throw out the non conference games, just play teams within your division. I could see, um, you know, something where you don't prolong things and you don't even play a state tournament. You just right. play your eight games and that's it. Um, and maybe, and, and ironically, maybe everybody goes back to playing a Thanksgiving Day game because it would be their last game of the year. Not a bad point. You know, I asked a coach this morning, would you sign right now to be able to play eight games with no playoffs? And he said, I think 90% of the coaches in New Jersey would sign for that right this minute. Yes, I agree. You know, if there's no playoffs in football, if we get to that, if there's every year for a short conference tournament, this would be it. <laughs> my hey, dream. Why not, you know? It's been my dream. Come 2020, on. 20, the year of the short conference tournament. That's it. One year and back to normal. That'd be Bob, interesting. Bob, Kevin will be fielding sponsor calls now for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, you know it's been my dream, uh, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I, you know, I, I feel bad. For we're, we're directly involved in a different way. But, you know, Matt talked about his, you know, his son, uh, you know, um, uh, Ed, your your son is an athletic director in the Shore Conference. Uh, Bob, your involvement, obviously, like we're 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 sort of uh, we're on the outside looking in. But I still feel bad for these these athletes, these student athletes who, yes. you know, not just, the, you know, and, and even I said with the spring. You know, it wasn't just about the kids who were the star-studded players who were still going to get a chance to go to college. For me, it was about the kid who knew this is my last season putting a uniform on. You know, I'm going to have one more year with my teammates. I've been playing baseball since Little League. I've been playing lacrosse since club lacrosse. This is it for me. I'm going to college for my education. I can't wait to have this year, and it was taken away. I just hope we can find a way, if possible, not to have that exist for any three of the three seasons next year totally yeah, that's yeah i think we all are going to say the same thing right guys totally agree with you kevin i mean it is heartbreaking for kids um yeah I, I think everybody has the same hope that that this will this too will pass time will heal and you know this will be something that 50 years from now they'll be talking about you know these kids hey can you remember the the winter spring and summer of 2020 how crazy yeah. it was and then hopefully life is back to normal yeah, the last comment I'll make, Kevin, and we really didn't even touch on it, if we don't get the kids back in school in September, this talk is all for naught because I don't think there'll be any sports if the kids are not back in school. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have a fairly strong feeling, strictly gut feeling, there'll be some modified in school right. this fall, whatever it is, split session, alternating days. I think anything that gets a kid in the building a couple of days a week allows for sports to happen. I agree with you, Ed. If there's nobody going in a building, it just it's a non-starter. You know, our, that this conversation is over. You know, but Bob, the one thing I'm going to finish up with you that we really didn't touch on. 
sports is important to the school. It's mm -hmm. it's not just about wins and losses. Like when I think of sports, I talk about you know a Friday night football game at Middletown South, uh, the Point Beach Point Borough wrestling match, like things like that. What those mean to communities and the school spirit. And when you take that away from a school, you take away in some cases the real heartbeat of a lot of places. I mean, we have to find a way for that to happen again. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, Sports is part of the, the fabric of our society. You mentioned some of those, you know, important <clears throat> games. And, you know, I think of, you know, a Saturday in Manasquan. You know, you drive into a game. Everyone's walking down the street to go to the game. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving with Manasquan and Wall. And Matt, certainly you know a ton about that. It When you take that away, yeah, you, you take away a little bit of the soul of the community. And it's like you said, it's not just all well, these kids are playing and sports and yada, yada. No, it, it goes beyond that. And that's one of the reasons people want to get back to this so quickly, whether it be at the pro or the college and certainly with us, the high school level, it, it gives people a sense that things are, are getting back to normal. Um, but at, at this level, this local level, what it means to those individual communities, um, you can't really understate that. Uh it's important. It's important for the kids. It's important for the parents. It's important for, you know, the casual fan who's been going out to a football game or a basketball game for 30, 40, sometimes 50 years. Um, and the sooner we can get that back, uh, obviously the better. Bob uh, Batters, Matt Harmon, Ed Sarluka, thanks so much. I have a feeling we'll have a chance to do this again probably in the next couple of weeks when we really find out where things are headed you know, to the fall with school and sports. We'll chat again. But for now, I thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thanks, guys.